Smoking jacket. Uh, I got this mantra that I'd like you to do with me if you feel like it. It's an unusual mantra because it starts with a yawn. Uh, I'll do it first. I'll do it first and then maybe we can do it together. Evil is boring. <laughs> Now, when an old tree in the rainforest dies and topples over, it takes a long time to decompose. And as it does, it becomes host to new saplings that use the decaying log for nourishment. I'd like you to picture yourself in the rainforest, gazing on this scene. How would you describe it? Would you dwell on the putrefaction of the fallen log as you ignored the fresh life that was sprouting out of it? If you did that, you'd be imitating the perspectives of many modern storytellers, especially the journalists and the novelists and the filmmakers and the producers of TV dramas and the radio talk show hosts and the critics and the poets. <laughs> They devoutly believe the tales of mayhem and affliction and corruption and tragedy are inherently more interesting and important than tales of triumph and liberation and pleasure and ingenuity. The German film actor Udo Kier spoke for the general consensus in an interview he did a, a while back. Evil has no limit. He sneered, blustering like a naughty genius. <laughs> Evil has no limit. Good has a limit. Good is not as interesting as evil. Now, 200 years ago, the English poet John Keats said something very different. He said, if something is not beautiful, it is probably not true. <laughs> But you see, Udo Kier and his compatriots say the exact opposite. Yeah. They say, if something is not ugly, it is probably not true. Yeah. Ugliness is truth. Truth is ugly. Using the juggernaut of the media and entertainment industries, these modern storytellers relentlessly propagate their covert dogma. And it's not sufficiently profound or well thought out to be called nihilism, so I refer to it as pop nihilism. <laughs> pop nihilism. <laughs> Unfortunately, the mass audience is the victim of this inane ugliness, brainwashed by a multi billion dollar propaganda machine that makes the Nazis brainwashing apparatus look like a child's backyard puppet show. This is the engine of the phenomenon that I call the global genocide of the imagination. Now, in my think tank, the Beauty and Truth Lab, we believe that tales about the rot are not inherently more interesting than tales about the splendor. On the contrary, given how ubiquitous and predictable they are, the tales about the rot are sedatives. In fact, Evil yeah. is boring. <laughs> Rousing fear is a hackneyed shtick. Wallowing in despair is a bad habit. Indulging in cynicism is akin to committing a copycat crime. <laughs> now the modern storytellers go even further in their devotion to the decay, implying that Tales of misery and destruction are not only more interesting than tales of breakthrough, but also far more common. They imply that painful twists outnumber sweet transformations by a wide margin. Now that's just absurd disinformation. I, of course, don't deny that there's a lot of suffering in the world, but the fact is the majority of people alive on this planet love to be alive. 
And the preposterous of the experience is yes! Not a no. Still, I'm willing to let the news media devote half their pages and airwaves and bandwidths to tales of decline and degeneration and misery and destruction. I can tolerate a moderate proportion of novels and films and TV dramas that revel in pathology. But I demand equal time for tales of ingenuity and joy and beauty and bliss and harmony and redemption and love. That's all I ask is a mere 50% of the pages, airwaves, and bandwidths. <laughs> Evil is boring. We want better stories. Cynicism's idiotic. Fear is a bad narcotic. Evil is boring.